going on, Mary? I don't think I noticed this last year. Radeon, you walk into any store. Also, the way they display the freaking a shirt like that. Like that. Let's check it out. Oh, somebody told me about this one. Only an hour late. We found a couple other soft coral. This is not really the spot for soft coral other than Zoas. This is really the Acropora heaven. Like, so, so many, yeah. What is going on, my reefing fam? March here, this is Fragbox TV, and today we are gonna do a video tour of top shelf aquatics. We did one a year ago. We're in Orlando, Reef of Palooza, so this would be kind of cool, doing like a one year update. Hello, and we're gonna see what's new, what's changed in the farm. I don't think I noticed this last year, or maybe I walked right by it, but I'm just gonna show you really quick. I love this idea, aquarium showroom. I wish, wish, wish we had the space for something like this. You know, our shop is really small. I think our store is probably the size of uh, this right here, and this is where they're just showcasing all the different tanks and sizes they have in store. Maybe one day they might have a little reef casa right there, just saying. Um, really clean, really well laid out, super duper clean. I can really appreciate that um, as a shop owner, but also as someone with pretty intense OCD. I always like seeing what they're stocking on their shelves, just to get ideas and compare and contrast like to what we have in the store, and a lot of the same thing. So just, you know, the good brands, stuff that's been around a long time, Salaford Tesket, Red Sea, Maxi Jets, AI, Ecotech, Neptune, um, Hydros is something that we don't have on our shelves, but a lot of the same stuff. And I really like this that I just stumbled across. So it's kind of like a serve yourself little copopod grow it station. Kind of a cool idea. That might something that might work for us. And then you just fill up your bag or bottle and uh, take home some live pods. Before we jump into the farm there in the back, I'm just going to give you a quick run down here. It's super duper clean. Again, really, really well laid out. And I found something I haven't seen in a while. A mystery wrasse. If I could take home one fish here today, it would be this beautiful little specimen. I have a story about this I can share with you on another time. This is really nice too. Look at this blue spot jawfish. Oh, let's focus in on him. Tons of character. They have a really nice selection of invertebrates and small fish like this entire wall. This 20 feet from here all the way to here. This is like five, six, seven times um, what we have in the store. Lots and lots of space and super clean. There's no dead fish, there's no disease, there's no parasites, nice selection, fair prices. And again, just clean, clean, clean. Not a drop of algae anywhere. This is really nice too. I'm just gonna make a quick comment on the prices because not every store out there does that. We do in our shop, but I think it's really good and transparent to have the price on the coral. I don't know if it's just something that happens in Toronto, but the price of the coral shouldn't change based on what kind of car you pull up in. And I'm fortunate to say some of the stores out there um, that definitely does happen. Radions, you walk into any store today, they're gonna be Radion lit. There's really no question. There's really no other option out there. I guess you could do Hydras or, or Neptune Skies, but you don't see it. Any any serious coral vendor out there running a store like this, Radion's the way to go. It looks like they're running some G5s across the whole, whole shop. Look at the size of this chalice. It's gotta be like two feet across. Just massive, massive chalice. Oh, this is nice. Look at this, they have their live rock in bins. I really like this. It's a very clever idea. Also, the way they display the frags is quite interesting. Um, these frag racks here are actually angled at a 45, so they're facing you. It's really cool to see that keep a file fish in there um, for pest control. Fish are a very useful and important form of pest control in tanks, and this guy would eat any aptasia that might make their way into here. That's a great way of dealing with pest wrasses um, for a lot of flatworms and file fish like this for aptasia. But for almost every pest, there's something out there that will eat it. So if they make it past a dip or a quarantine, um, that's a good sort of last line of defense. That's super cool. The way they're displaying the apex. So we're running full apex in the store, but it's all hidden in the basement. You never know or see it. This is really nice the way it's set up so that customers can see exactly what they're running. Look at that. Just like our shop. Yellow tanks, chocolate tanks, scopus and taminis and all of the tanks for um, algae control. It's exactly how it's done and that's why look what they're doing. Exactly what they're designed to do. Just constantly looking and eating for uh, any algae. That is a really nice acro. Definitely a deep water species. I'm gonna guess Mokani, maybe Granulosa. I'm not sure. It's yellow and it's really cool. I've actually never seen one quite like that. Okay, so we're actually gonna take a short walk. Their farm facility is just um, maybe a couple hundred feet over behind the shop. I get a shirt like that. I like this shirt. <laughs> I want one of these. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> What's your name? Barry. Barry! This is why we actually came here, to see the Orlando Society of Model Railroaders. What up? Restricted access, employees only. Ooh, I feel so special. Wow, okay, this is all new. 
Damn, what is this? What is this mad laboratory over here? Yeah, you are. Holy. Yeah, this none of this was here um, last year. How about here with these rocks? What are you guys doing? Culturing Aptasia. Yeah. Bergia Farm. Holy sh... Okay, I'm not going to swear on this one, kids. This will be a family-friendly one. I've never seen a proper Bergia farm, Bergia setup. I've seen people kind of half-ass it, but... Yeah, that's how it's done. Look at the plumbing. You guys yeah. don't you don't mess around. <laughs> it's relatively new, so I wish I could give you more information on it. But that's I cool. Taras is the one that's gonna be. Let's like, check it out. It's kind of fun being you. Yeah. Around. Yeah, this is a big spot. Oh my God, there's. Oh, I guess corals grow. They're, they do. Oh yeah. Especially in our system. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is like way more grown out. Way more zoas too. Yeah. I think you guys were just starting to dabble into the softies and zoas and it looks like they're really taking off. What are these? Um, kind of looks sort of like a raptor rainbow meets sunny D meets yeah, orange yeah. rainbow, something in between. It's funny, some of the same you know, zoas will look different in different systems. They change size and color based yeah. on light nutrients, but every, <laughs> your size here and color is perfect. Look at these, awesome. Orange oxides, bam bams, rainbow incinerators, pinwheels. Maybe some Mohawks, or sometimes we call them LA Confidential, Gatorade, all in between the acro, just completely covered with Zoas and some funky looking green star polyp. Radeon, 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 Radeon. How many Radeons running in here? Oh, I have no idea. A thousand? A lot. A lot. Um, we, we constantly um, no maintenance them. Okay. Um, oh, drop over the water. Is, yeah. It looks like that. that is the light of choice in here. Yeah. Oh, but still, still running some halides. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. great for acro growth. They are right. Yeah. There's still room if you if you want to grow acro. Look at the polyp extension on the stuff. It's super white. You're not going to show off the color, but to get the color and get them to grow, and then after I think switch them to reef bright. I mean um, radians to show it off. Yeah. But look at how healthy these things look. Wow. So grown up. How do you manage them? Touching, just must be well, constantly pruning. I mean, we take a look at them every day to make sure. But this guy's part touching. Of the reason why they're on PVC, just in case something happens, we'll either frag them. And that is a great fish to keep in there. Yeah, probably <laughs> the most powerful Aptasia eater out of them all, right? Oh yeah. If it you can, tremendous, yeah. if you can get a healthy one, yeah. yeah. Awesome. This plating grafted Monty. That it's just like from Monty Pora Heaven. He's just doing exactly what you want to see. Yeah. Like plate, perfect, and then bam, again, one more time. <laughs> plate on top of plate, the red on green. That's like, you know, when you type something in Google and you want to see like the perfect image, that's what it should be yeah, yeah. <laughs> for plating Monty. How do you guys keep track of what's in here? I don't see any numbers or or barcodes or how do you know what's what and where's what and so each system, I mean, depending on the system, we'll have like a skewed sort of section. And that's just for online picking. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the stuff is just grown out. Just so growing out. It's not necessarily organized in a certain way to, you know. Yeah. Online stuff. Oh my God, so we'll much. We'll know exactly where they're at. Look at this. This is one of my favorites, the purple Milka Stylo. Really cool, some branching Cyphastria, which is quite unusual because usually it encrusts, but they have this red variety. I've actually only ever seen it red. What is that? <laughs> oh. oh my god, there's so much acro in here. It's half the ocean in this thing. <laughs> right now we're actually elevated above this um, sort of stand. What's under here? I guess the sumps? Yep, sumps. Big um, protein skimmers? Big protein skimmers, big UVs. Uh, Pretty much everything here runs on calculator too, so. Oh, no way. Not really high pH. Oh, that's good. I guess important for growth, right? Oh, yeah. What are you guys trying to keep the pH at? Uh, each tank is different. Um, but, I mean, from what I've heard from um, this guy's here, I think it's around like 8.3, 8.4. Nice and high. Somewhere around there, yeah. Wow, look at this Achilles. You, chunky monkey. Yeah. <laughs> you are not hungry. That is really nice to see. A healthy Achilles without ick is quite a rare sight. Looks like we have some... All the fish go through quarantine uh, before they end up in the system. How do you feel about these starfish right here, these little asterinas? So, I know there are some species that can be a really big nuisance. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, 
crew? Kind of a cleanup crew, not really. I mean, everybody has their own take on them. I, I don't think they're pests. I don't think so either. Uh huh. Uh, Finally, thank you. Some yeah. someone who agrees. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I can see without even trying. There's a hundred there. Yeah. And look how your corals look. They look fantastic. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've heard people say they eat corals. I'm not convinced because we have a lot of them in our shop. Yeah. Yep. And I, I have a bunch of them at home in my tanks too, and I haven't really seen any you know, negative effects to them. That could be just be, you know, maybe there's just one that's doing something and you can't really notice it, and that's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, what I do if it's getting out of control at night, I'll take my hand yeah. and I'll just take yeah. them all off and throw them yeah. in with some harlequin shrimp. Yeah. Crazy. Looks like, uh, what are these? Sea chase? Um, I think so. Yeah, some older ones. I think. Big ass ceches, older yeah. ones. Yeah, Italian made. What up, Italy? They make some good pumps. <laughs> Big fan of the ceches. Just stuff growing everywhere. Like every yeah. corner, you have encrusting, encrusting. Just coral on top of coral. How many gallons in one of these uh, systems here? Uh, I want to say each one maybe around three hundred. So three, six, nine. Plus the sump. Uh, plus the sump. Maybe yeah. 1,200. Yeah, it's well over 1,000. And then there's a lot of those set up, isn't it? Yeah. In total, I think it's uh, 30,000 gallons. Wow, 30,000 yeah. gallons. It's a big pool. Yeah. Something I noticed right when I walked in, there's no mold smell and it doesn't feel wet like a lot of stores. You guys must yeah. have a big humidifier so, or dehumidifier. We have a bunch of them. There's one of them there. Yeah, it feels nice in here. It feels yeah. cool. It's not like that sticky feeling you sometimes get in a shop, right? Yeah. No, uh, I think we have... Big boy. Um, I've added a new one, but there used to be two. Do you have a favorite acro right now in here that really speaks to you or that stands out? Ooh, me? Yeah. Oh. Personal, personal favorite? I don't know how you would choose. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of variety, but one of my favorite classic ones, like a poetic pink tip. You have one to show us? Oh, yeah. Let's go yeah. check it out. So much. Hi, girlfriend. She's so good. She comes along for the ride and puts up with all the fish nerds. So many, okay, so many healthy fish, like, just big. These are not little. Yeah, they're the box face is massive. massive. Yeah. <laughs> There's no nano reef fish, no nano reefs in here. These are all yeah. big, big tanks. What are we looking for, yeah, the paletta? paletta? Oh, in Center. the middle? That's one of my favorites, yeah. Classic. Classic, yeah, for sure. So healthy. Is this a pink Cadillac here? Um, maybe, maybe for us, could be. Yeah. Or it could, it could be a different name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many names, man. This looks like a species of Velita, maybe. Yeah. That's a tricolor. Tricolor, yeah. yeah. That's another nice one I like. Classic piece. Yeah. Easy to grow, easy to keep. The structures look super healthy. Sometimes I find when you grow stuff in captivity, you get weird growth mm -hmm. and patterns, but these are like just perfect. Dense, yeah. yeah. I think it's the flow. Lots of flow. Lots of flow. Lots of flow. Yes. So this tank I notice has got um, sort of a deep sand bed compared to the other ones. Is there a reason for that? Why this one is deep and then here nothing? Um, well, I mean, again, every tank runs a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say it's just better for stability. Um, but we do tend to run a lot more flow in the ones that are bare bottom. What the heck is this? Paloensis? Um, like it's plating, but it's... Looks like it wants to encrust, but he decided to plate. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's, not bad. that's really yellow. Again, I always say this on the video, guys. The camera does not do these <laughs> things justice. Never going to do it justice. Yeah. Why are these fish down here in the sump? This is jail misbehaving? No. Um, well, actually, it could be. But... Just being little shits? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think these are just kind of helping with the bio load. Massive skimmer. We have, uh, looks like a Nios 220. You guys like the Nios, I guess? Yeah. We've got almost every type of flow. This is MP60s, Reef Octopus. Um, looks like the big gyres here. Every tank something else, huh? Yeah. They all have their benefits, I guess. They all they all move water in a different way. And yeah, I mean, this one's shallower, so we like the gyres. Oh, it is, yeah. These are actually quite deep when you think about it. In terms of a growing tank, you usually see about half, maybe even more than half. Yeah. 12, 16 inches. That looks like, what, 30? Yeah. Uh, what's running over here? C5? Oh no, what are these? Those are funky. T5 with something else. Uh, Orphic, so I want to say. Orphic, yeah. Yeah. Just really a, just a mishmash of every type of light yeah. and pump imaginable. This one's just a nice blanket of all. I would use T5s. 
Look at this bird's nest. Even something as simple and basic as a bird's nest, the polyps are like almost falling out of the skeleton. Like, I don't know <laughs> if I've ever seen, this is a bird's nest that wants to be a torch. Yeah. Look how they're coming out. I think that's the longest I've ever seen. It just shows like the, the overall health, I guess, of the system. Check out how this guy's encrusting. I have pieces that do that. It's kind of annoying because you want the guy to grow up yeah. You want to frag it, yeah. right? Like, let's go, let me frag you, make some money, and pay the rent. No, this son of a gun, for whatever reason, has decided I'm going to encrust like a knob over here. And then at some point, he might just start to shoot off, right? For whatever reason? For whatever reason, really. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a pain to get him off when you want to, he gets too, too he, big. He might just, you just might go this way and then cover yeah. all this. And yeah. Yeah, you never know. We've seen it happen, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, corals are funny like that. For me, the Tyree Pink Lemonade has always done that. He wants to encrust like this much, yeah. and he's not gonna grow where he, you frag them. He's gonna just shoot off in some weird random direction. Yeah. Man, so many acro. Look at this, like just a bird's nest tank. I guess these are popular, huh? Yeah, and they do very well. I mean, they're almost like weeds here. Incredible. Um, you guys had some LPS last time I was here. We do, yeah. So that's going to be your luck here. That's where we have most of our LPS, Donnie's, Gorges. Wow. You guys have really filled up every square inch of this place. Like, there's no room left. Yeah. Plans to expand? Oh, absolutely. Never yeah. never stops growing, huh? Yeah. What are those? Water change? Yeah. or? So we do, I want to say 10 or 15% water change on every system here. Look at that. You guys hearing that? I'm going to repeat it in case you didn't hear it. It's a little loud in here. 10 to 15 percent water change how often every month every month yeah i've always been a big believer in water change you do it at home i guess you have a tank at home. oh yeah are you allowed to work here without having a tank at home i'm sure some of the guys here don't have tanks at home weird but weirdos really need to have some experience with it yeah i'm sure even the guys that don't have tanks are well versed in you know how to maintain a tank yeah some sort of cool right yeah what is this also bird's dust yeah so it's it's funky though. Yeah. It's maybe Stylo, yeah. It's like Stylo, but skinnier than I'm used to seeing. Yeah. Scott Stylo who wants to be bird's nest. Yeah, and part of the reason why we have different sort of methodologies, like some of them have sand beds, some of them have more flow, less flow, different kinds of light, mm -hmm. is that we'll have the same, you know, fried off piece going to a different tank and it looks completely different. It'll change. So, yeah. What kind of um, salt are you using for the water change? What's the salt for the, for the shop here? Of uh, Red Sea. Red sea. Oh. So if you don't know what that is, let me show you. You have one lying around? We can show uh, the, the reefing fam. We have giant sacks of it in our warehouse, but I don't, I don't think we have anything. Okay, there. nothing to here. show you, but it's a. we just call it blue bucket in the hobby. That means the blue bucket of the Red Sea, which is usually a lot lower in um, alkalinity. I, I guess that's why the reason you're using it. Yeah. And then you can bring up the alkalinity. So lower in al calcium mag. And for people that are really looking to fine tune and grow acro, I usually recommend that salt because you have a little bit more control because you start so low yep. as opposed to the black, your, your alkalinity is at 12. It's much harder to reduce alkalinity than it is to raise it. Yeah, so much. What are you running here? Also the Nios it looks like, huh? Yeah, double Nios. They're great skimmers, made yeah. in Germany. The owners are actually here at Reef of Palooza, so it's a lot of fun to actually connect with, you know, the people behind the brand. Like, okay, we use MP40s and Radions, and then it's different when you're sitting at the table with one of the guys who started the company. It's it's so cool. It's a it's really really nice experience. What's on the other side? More acro? Yeah, just more acro. Acro, acro, and more acro. Who started Top Shelf? Who started? Yeah. Um, well, there's three co-owners. I want to say there's probably a fourth one, but um, three. Kevin Berta. Yeah. Um, Stephen Pace and Alex Diller. They all get along. Yeah. Wow, rare. Knock on, <laughs> knock on glass. That's awesome. Yeah. It's uh, it's not easy to have a partnership, and then yeah. they, they got a three-way going on. That's um. Yeah. Oh. Kind of handles their own sector. They got their own yeah. thing going on. What's that in the back? Is that the Oregon tort? The blue one and the right, and the, the really really blue one in the back there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's an Oregon. Yeah. Another classic. classic That's a piece. classic. Yeah. We don't see a lot of that up in Canada. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of rare. Yeah. It shouldn't be though because Tortusa as a species I find is really easy to grow. Yeah. So it should be like, yeah. you know, trickle down through the market, but you, you know, don't. Everyone's having their blued out tanks and not really appreciate it. Yeah, you know what? Like you need that. You need the halide you know? to see how nice the blue is. Yeah. Under under the radion, it, it, you get that Windex look sometimes. You're not yeah. going to, blue and purple, they get washed out. Yeah. So, well, 
I'm just blown away with like how yeah. so much. This is a perfect example of how we would do like online skewing. Nice. These are cool. I'm all into organization. These are old frags too. So when you're looking at frags, you see this guy right there. He's like encrusted over the actual rack. This was not fragged yesterday. This was made months and months ago. It takes a lot. You can't fake that right there. There's no. There's no faking it. That. It means he was fragged to the point where he's so happy and healthy that he's just completely encrusted over the plug. That's a really good sign to see. It's way easier to ship them too, right? When you guys do more online, more walk-in. Um, I want to say it's more online. More online, yeah. Pretty big online. Um, but I don't know. Lately, it's been a lot of retail. So many frags. Look at these. Perfect examples of Superman Montipora. Oh, right there. Some rainbows. Some mystic sunsets. Basically, if, if it's if it's out there, if it's a Monty, these guys will have it in their collection. How does the quarantine process work if you guys want to add something new? So, um, there are systems like the ones we're looking at right now that it would be approved instead of quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, we're not perfect. I mean, we try our best to make sure there's nothing on it. Can you guys guarantee that a coral is pest-free? Do you think anyone, anyone in the world can in their right mind, sell a coral online or in store and say, I guarantee it's pest free. I don't think so. I hope everyone is listening to that comment. It's coming, this is not from me. This is coming from, they're at the top, the top shelf. It's in the name. <laughs> like, look where I am right now. You cannot guarantee it's pest free. And everyone has to dip. If you can quarantine, great. I, obviously, we don't all have the resources or the room to set up a quarantine tank. We're talking microscopic, some of these things. Yeah. And so what I found over the years is you manage, you learn to live with them. They're out in the ocean. They're going to make their way in. You try your best. And then if they make their way in, you add uh, wrasses, you add copper bands, you add filefish, you add bergia, you add peppermints. There's all these natural predators, natural ways of keeping things in check. The last thing that you want to do is take all those fucking coral and throw them in the garbage. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not going to touch on that topic again. We have here some anacropora. It's much, mm, yeah, I'm gonna say much easier to keep than most species of Acropora. So if I'd you, say so too. yeah, right? Yeah. If you wanna try getting into something that looks like an Acro, you're gonna look like a nice big tree. They only come in a couple varieties. So we have the uh, Green Goblin and the TNT here side by side. And look at that, they can actually touch and grow in between with no issue. Look for an Acropora. So it sounds like I'm saying Acropora at an A N, Apple Nancy in front of that. Really easy to keep. And you can keep them in uh, lower light a, a lot more forgiving with that same look. That would be a good sort of piece to, to get into. Maybe Tortusa as well, Tenuous, Slimer, Valida. These are some of the Latin names of the easier to keep stuff. Man, everywhere you turn, you could spend two days in here and I'm sure you're not gonna be able to cover everything you have. It's just so much. Look uh, every, at Every now and then I'll come in and you know, pick up a pool for someone and I'll forget that I'm working because I'm just staring at it. Yeah, you just <laughs> get stuck, yeah. Just a tremendous amount. How many people are working here, um, kind of in the back, in, in this farm section? Um, my number's probably way off. You're, ca you're counting in your head. Joe, Luis, yeah, Fernando, yeah. Ernesto. Yeah. Um, Five. Each one has their own, you know, den sector. We want to handles like maintenance, each one handles online, banking, okay. online photography. This is uh, different. Like Ernesto does all the uh, social media. What am I looking at here? That one's actually what we call Double Trouble. Double Trouble, I like that. Awesome for us. Uh, oh, so, they can touch? Yeah, they can I touch. didn't know that, so you see? We might have a colony where they grow in kind of together. That is funky. Uh, Pretty cool, yeah. You know what? This is a hobby where I, I never stop learning. You go to another shop, <laughs> you're always going to learn or see something you've never seen. You, you don't master this thing and it never ends. Like something as simple as that. I didn't know that those two, maybe you did, maybe I sound really ignorant right now. Um, I didn't know that and I've also never seen uh, Setosa of that color. So I'm yeah. used to seeing Setosa like that, traditional red. I didn't know that they come orangey. Yeah. We have actually grafted um, a couple of them together. I saw one yesterday for the first time. Yeah, yeah someone really had cool it. It's funky, yeah. yeah. Grafted coral, that's sort of like the hottest thing in the last five, six, seven years is trying to see which two can we play God and get to stick together. Wow, wow. how come your Skittle Bomb is so nice? This is a Cyphastria. <laughs> Damn, 
That's Skittle Bomb, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, mine looks like yeah. fart compared to this. So I think that's one of the ones that like um, the established growth will have one solid color and the new growth will have this sort of rainbowy pattern around yeah. it. Yeah. So when it's new, it looks great. It's but, just on uh, fire. for a while, it's probably going to are all the radions sorry guys you know what i'm jumping around so much though so fast you oh, look at this how many people work here i do suffer from add but this is how the videos go and i'm not going to apologize for it anymore um these radions are they all running the same schedule no. everything's different everything's a little bit different but uh, i would say mainly ad plus just like ab plus yeah. yeah that's a good schedule are they running on mobius um I don't think so since these are deep boards. Oh, okay. So uh, probably hooked up to really like... Smart. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Even on the side of the tanks, just Monty, Monty. It's kind of cool thing about Monty. They'll encrust on any surface they touch. Yep. Yeah. And even, same with Zoas. Any space you give them. You let them, they'll do it. You let them, they'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> and just tangs on tangs on tangs. I guess these got to go through pretty rigorous quarantine as well, right? Yeah. So this is actually... This race right here would be one of our quarantine systems. For, yeah. fi for fish as well? I mean, every every tank, every fish here has to go through some sort of quarantine ish. Yeah, fish are fish are not fun. Yeah, especially when one gets it, then the whole. That's system the thing. Out. Like, yeah, one gets sick. Oh, you're right. If out. this King Midas gets sick, let's say he he's suffering from something, a a pest or a disease, it's not going to affect this, and it's not going to affect the red digi. It's usually coral specific, right? Yep. That one tang gets ick. All throughout, every single fish is susceptible to the same disease, living in the same water. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah, I think that's why I was always drawn more towards the corals. What a perfect example, even of glow polyps. Like, <laughs> look at that. And I don't get mine that big. Any secret to that size? Uh, it's just a whole colony, I would say. Not steroids? Uh, no, no steroids. The big boy. Yeah. Old, yeah. How old is this um, setup, this facility, this farm? Um, it's a few years six. old. So we used to only be where the retail side. We used yes. to have a farm just right next to it. Um, and then we've sort of been expanding and expanding. But this one, God, I'm probably so wrong. Uh, maybe five years old, maybe. And plans to move or expand from here? I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, we're running out of space. Clearly. Yeah. What is this? That's funky. I actually don't know. Not the most colorful. Aha! We're both stumped. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of got the extension of a bird's nest yeah. and the growth, but it's not. It's uh, it's strange. It's different. That's a weird one. You guys, I remember last time I came, I had a nice tank of just tenuous. Is that still around? Um, I didn't see too many. I'm seeing a lot of acro species, but none of the actual non. We have a lot of tenuous in here. Um, I don't think we have one that just houses all of them or most. Maybe my memory is fading with age. Wow, look at this. Is that the Kung Pao? Or Beach Plum? Yeah, I think it's a Beach Plum. I can't keep yeah. up with the, with that the smooth type. skin stuff. Yeah. Is like super, like it's really nice, you know, to put them right next to each other and kind of differentiate, but when they're standalone, they're kind of hard to find. Wow. Pearlberry? Pearlberry, yeah. Oh. One of my favorites too, yeah. I think that is the nicest Pearlberry I've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> wow. Also a classic. Also a classic. But like a rare classic. Yeah. Yeah, not. I never had the best luck growing it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are saying that too. RA is at that piece for forever, I think, and a lot of people just seem to. They're having luck. Yeah. Are you, what are you keeping at home? Uh, SPS mostly. So Mix? I have one system I'm setting up. That's just SPS, and then I've had a 20 gallon innovative rain mixed reef for like seven years now. Oh, That's nice. Now. What is going on under here? This is funky. Oh, so we're actually called training. Um, what are you guys not doing? Amphibots. Um, that should, list would be shorter. That, yeah, I, I, we're doing a lot of things. Um, What's with the sponges? So, let's see here, some oh, of the amphibots. They're and then like the how, small how come? Why do you want amphipods? Uh Just another part of the cleanup crew. Um, little detritus eaters? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Would we recommend people usually when you start a new tank, grab a bottle of live pods? Reef I mean, nutrition. That's always good. Yeah. Uh, tigger More pods. A, a, that's exa exactly it. Yeah. I didn't think we touched on the uh, the LPS. I love the way you guys display the, the Neptune stuff. It's so nice. So clean. Oh, look at this. You don't see that too often. Side by side. <laughs> Boom. We have the king and the new kid on the block. How come? I actually don't know. Oh, um, maybe just because we could. Yeah. I'm sure there, there's some benefit to having... 
the hydros along with the apex. Maybe board. they offer something else. I'm not well versed in the hydros. I just know that it looks sexy. Yeah, no, I agree too. It looks like when it's all set up on yeah, a board. Yeah, yeah. This guy yesterday at, at the show, we were walking by, he's like, damn, I don't know what that is or if it works, but it doesn't matter because that thing's hot. Yeah. And it, it really is. It's just the, the presentation. A properly set up hydro system is great. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool. So don't forget, water change. The kings are doing it. I think you should too. Unless you're keeping all leathers and mushrooms, then call it a day and, and just add some, some iodine to your water. But otherwise, yeah, water change is very key. These are closed systems, you know? And so it's kind of like, I always think of it like flush in the toilet. You want to get the bat out and get some new in. That's the first leather coral I'm seeing today. <laughs> That's nice to see. What do you call this, pineapple? Uh, huh? uh, I think it's just the uh, neon green naphtia. Oh, nice. Yeah. We call this the blue pineapple. But keep in mind, what I call it, what they call it, what someone in Germany calls it, it's all going to be different. All different. Torches, I can't keep up with the names anymore. <laughs> I'm lost. You, this is the golden banana New York ball buster. I don't know. This is kind of funky back here. These are very nice torches, but look, hiding right in the back. You see that one there? Oh, let me focus. Short tor uh, extension. It kind of looks like a torch that's suffering, but it's not. This is a sort of rare, um, I think it's called a Cristada, the Latin name, but it's like a stubby torch from Tonga or Fiji, one or the other. We don't see them too often, and they actually come blue which is a strange color to find on Euphelia, but they come in this light blue variety. That one's really, really neat. And if you don't know what you're looking for, it would be very easy to miss across these very healthy, traditional kind of torches they have going on here. LPS is uh, sort of newish for you guys, no? I feel like... We've had them for a while, but okay. we're starting to expand with the varieties. Acanthophilias, Cinerias, Lobos. I feel like this was, this is way more full than the last time I came. That's a nice open grade, wow. Very cool color. If you wanted to call that rainbow, you, you could. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure we did, yeah. what is going on here? Explain me. Yeah, that's our uh, dragon's breath. It's a lot of dragon's breath. Yep. You tumble it as if it was Chato. Yep. And is there a reason why this over uh, Chato? Um, I mean, it's a little, a little bit cleaner, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't build as much detritus as like a sponge, like uh, like Chato is. I mean, like... We have Chato in there. We'll occasionally mix them. Okay. But yeah, I mean, this this usually has um, less sponginess to it, so it builds less detritus. Does every tank here have a refugium? Almost. Almost every tank. Very uh, powerful way of reducing. Actually, it might be that. All the time. Yeah. It's a very, very old and very old, uh, effective way. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. how come the monos? I see some freshwater monos in there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think love them. Just kind of keeping all the the detritus and food that goes in there. That way. Keep it moving. Yeah. Look at this zoas and zoas, like stuff that I would proudly display, top and center. Some nice palithoa grandis. Yeah. These guys have them on the floor. <laughs> Look at these pink hippos. Look at the size of these things. These are. These are floor corals for them. Yeah. These are for well, yeah, bottom part, level. That's why we should expand because we're keeping a lot of the stuff on the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Mushrooms are out of this world. Oh, if I can get past some of the algae. Look at these. Some ridiculous colors. More LPS. And really nice puddled out. Like, again, nothing here is, these are not fresh cut frags. These are old, 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 healthy, healthy pieces. And uh, here's a different philosophy on a refugium. Bunch of skin. Yeah. I've never seen that. How come? Um, they do soak up a lot of uh, oh yeah nutrients. nutrients yeah, and they grow really really fast. They grow like nuts. Actually, <laughs> or lunch break. This lunch video break, tour is taking yeah. too much time. What are we getting? Chipotle. Chipotle. Oh damn right we are. Yeah, look at these. This is a funky one. You know what? I'm gonna not even tell you what this is. I'm gonna leave this for you guys to guess if you know what that is. That's a very kind of unique, strange. I want to be a Monty, but I'm not a Monty. And I'm kind of growing like a branching Cyphastria, but I'm green. So those are your clues, very annoying clues. Let's see if anyone in the comments below can guess what that one is. Yeah, we need to do that, check this out. Top shelf, written in Cyphastria. <laughs> That's pretty funky. I like getting stumped. I like when I see something that I'm not sure what it is. So over here we have some pipe organ and some funky GSP, and then sandwiched right in between. I think those are daisy polyps. Oh, they are daisy, damn. Yeah. Just everything here is on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> My daisies look like nothing, like a fraction of that. I didn't know they actually could get that long. 
That's pretty cool. Starfish with a couple too many legs. I'm near Chris. What are you? Chalice? I'm stumped too. I haven't seen that one yet. That's funky. Yeah. It looks like a chair. Like it wants yeah. a, like a <laughs> fish to come come and sit in you know, my, the throne of chalice. The growth is strange and so is the color. Yeah. So between the two of them. Nice collection of Ghanipora, but oh no, they're not Ghani. Oh, maybe. Bernard. Look, Bernard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're like the longest tentacled Bernardoporas I've seen. They're borderline Ghanis. <laughs> But usually Bernardopora, at least for us, a lot, a lot shorter. And they kind of almost always come in these orangey red sort of colors here, but much longer than I'm used to seeing. How many people asked to come through this thing today? Wow, nice checkerboard ass. Oh, bye. How many people come in? Yeah. Um, I mean, a couple times a week. I guess whenever we can, we'll try and jump one other. We're not super slow in. Even your recordias are just perfect. You guys are spoiled here in Florida. You don't you don't realize <laughs> because they're native to here. Like yeah. you guys go in the water and there's your recordia. Yeah. It's like if you know I were to sell snow, it would be really easy. But these go for a lot of money. If you're watching from Australia or maybe from New Zealand, you guys already know what recordias cost over there. Way, way more expensive. Here you can find not the most colorful ones, 15, 20 bucks. Really colorful, 25, what, 30? Decent price. You're yeah. talking a couple hundred once you get into the other side of the world. And then it's the same thing for us, like, you know, certain Acans and Duncans, really expensive. You go over to the other side of the world where, where they're found, not so expensive. Even here, again, Radions looks like G6. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even on the softies. So Very similar, the bodies, yeah. right? Yeah. Some more Euphilia, Amherst. Very funky torch, check this out. Looks like a little bit bleached, but it almost has a cool stress appearance. So sometimes corals, even when they're, you can still be healthy. You can be bleached and healthy. It just means he's dropped some of that bacteria that gives him that color, that zoanthelly. And it looks really funky. I'm in love with this fish, hello. <laughs> nice, really nice checkerboard oh, dress. Yeah. yeah, you are now world famous. And you're smart because you know what? There's no lid and you're still in the tank, which is kind of rare. Yeah. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't flop on the floor. In, uh, Some sort of deep fish. water. Yeah. Looks like they're keeping them all together. These are Speciosa. Speciosa. Yeah. Quite rare. And very, very unique color. I guess they nailed what they want for light because they more or less have um, the only ones I've seen here, all in a gang together, hanging out on the one corner yeah. of this tank. Little hammer corals. Beautiful chalice. I haven't seen too many chalice yet, but the few that they have. Come on, look at this. This is like, uh, I'm just gonna say it. it's ultra rainbow. That's it, that's it, I've said it. I don't think I've ever used that word before. I don't like the word ultra. I think it's been hoard out. I don't like the word rainbow because it's been used like a, man, I'm trying to keep it family friendly. It's a very often used word that is <laughs> freaking meaningless. I'm not gonna use sexual analogies. But if you were to call something ultra rainbow, that's it. That's the ultra rainbow right there. So I have a problem with that word. You guys know I'm, I'm turning into an old man and ranting more on the channel than I should. But rainbow has become just, I don't know, it's synonymous with everything. And this, you might find, the, oh, rainbow hammer. Look at this, it's a rainbow. It's not rainbow, that's rainbow. That's, that's really rainbow. Yeah. And that's really cool. Growing, uh, I didn't know you could do that with Ghanis, but they have them growing vertically. Is that because you're out of space or just because? Space? Yeah, I mean, they do, they do well. Yeah, Clearly, yeah. As well, yeah. That's so funky. You would never, I don't think you would find them in the wild like that. But, uh, yeah, well, it's possible. I guess if they land on the side of a cliff, look at these. Yeah. Same thing. They look super healthy. Maybe that's the trick to keeping Ghani. You guys have had trouble? Try gluing it on the side. <laughs> Rave corals. <laughs> oh, somebody told me about this yesterday. This uh, wanker over from, uh, from London. Maybe you know, know him. His name is Paul from Advanced Aquarium Butt Consultancy. He said, March, make sure you see the anemone tank on the floor. That's my impression of English people. Sorry, guys. Wow, look at these. Again, floor corals. Anyone would be happy to showcase these in their display tank. These guys have so much. These, are, these have been condemned to the floor. That's a lot of nems. You feeding them? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Holy. I don't think I've actually Ever had one of these? Black Widow. That's a really good name. Yeah. It's deserving. Sometimes coral names, they just 
fit. Yeah. You know, Rasta Zoas? Those look like Rasta Zoas. Fruit Loops, that's a good example. Yeah. Do they not look like Fruit Loops? That's yeah. it. And they're synonymous. Some, some of them have been around so long, there's no, con you don't confuse Fruit Loop with anything else. That's it. Fruit Loop is a Fruit Loop. Rasta is a Rasta. Watermelon right in there. Watermelon. And now we can add Black Widow to that same list. It doesn't end. Some long spine for algae management. Again, crazy mushrooms condemned to the floor. Recordia, look at this. If you live in Australia and found this, this is like winning the lottery. <laughs> More or less. Funky, actually. Now that I think about it, these are must be custom made? I think they are custom made. I've never seen these. Yeah. Almost look like... Uh, well, they, we've had them forever, too. They work. Yeah. And they also look like they're adjustable. The Soas are just perfect size and color. Sometimes you sacrifice color for size. If you go super low light, they'll get really big, but they get a little bit dull. And the opposite, if you go high light, they'll get super saturated, but really, really small. And it looks like they figured out the perfect balance between size and color. So Zoas are one that can really, Zoas and Acro, I'd say more than any other coral, can really change to the point where you might not even recognize it. So I saw some utter chaos yesterday that are just completely, completely different. Only an hour late, but look who decided to come. The Canadians. The Canadians have arrived. Oh, maybe you know, maybe you know Devin over here, Reef Dudes. What's going on? Bonjour. Patrick from Reef Wholesale. No, the tour is over. You're late. Sorry. Yeah, I know. They are actually culturing amphipods um, just to increase biodiversity and eat detritus. Oh, cool. So they use these sponges. Huh? I feel like I work here now. Look at this. They're going to add me to the payroll. There's more and more and more, and everywhere you look, there's just so much going on. The fragging room? Fragging room slash multi-purpose room. Multi-purpose yeah. mess room. Everyone needs one of these. I really like this, how you have them, the band sauce cut into the counters. Yeah. <laughs> That's so smart. A chair. Oh, duh, that would save our backs. So we do all of ours kind of like, eh, like hunched over, and it, it's, you know, if you're fragging a lot, you feel it. This is so smart. And then what? You can just whoosh, rinse it. Yep. Where does it go? I'm gonna I'm gonna use this. Oh damn! Yeah. Right down into a sink. I know it seems really trivial and really dumb. And most of you are watching this channel to learn something about corals. And I hope you do. But simple little ideas like this are such game changers as a business owner. And it's like as simple as putting the bandsaw into a custom sink. I know it sounds really really dumb. I'm absolutely going to implement something like this. Even this, look at this. You can make a big bloody mess. It doesn't matter because it's all waterproof. With um, waterproof plugs, genius. Really cool. What's going on in here? Just uh, holding quarantine? Quarantine for fish. Nice. So a little bit different than that. We'll run different medications through it. But... Copper? Uh, I think we run copper in one of these. I want to say it's the bigger one here. Patrick, check this out. Look what they have. How they have their bandsaw set up. How smart is that? Yeah, that's awesome. I know. Yeah. And then it, it drains underneath. It's a sink. Yeah. So you can just wash it out. And then, the, and then that to wash like the saws off. Even this. Going. Even just to wash out the back. Yeah. Keep your workspace clean. And yeah. Water dripping down the front. Simple things, eh? <laughs> I know it sounds dumb, you, but it's. You use it's... the accelerator with a eyedropper too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we do too. Yeah. For yeah. Instead spray, of it spraying just on everything. Goes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever accidentally spray yourself Smart. in the face with it? I'm also gonna keep. This, I'm gonna steal this. Like Sink is not a storage area. Yeah. So no, no, it's not. There, but yeah. you know what? Yeah. Surprising that you need to put up a sign, but you do. Aptasia Islands. Coming to a theater near you. I don't know why I'm doing English accent. You mess with me, Paul. Yeah, no, great, no, no, no. great form of algae <laughs> management, especially for coralline. So you see how everything here is purple? The whole tank is purple. This is actually an algae. Um, usually desirable, except if you're trying to grow corals. It's actually the biggest pain in the ass because it covers every surface in this calcified stuff. This is a great way to sort of reduce and manage it and add some big ass urchins. We found a couple other soft coral. This is not really the spot for soft coral other than zoas. This is really the Acropora heaven. Like so, so many, yeah. It's just, it's an overwhelming amount of hard coral. If you're into keeping SPS, 
and you ever have a chance to come down here and check them out, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Or give them a shot online. They ship right across the continental United States. They'll send them right to your door. Um, they've been doing it a long time too. They have an arrival live guarantee. This is not a new setup. They are definitely trained veterans when it comes to fragging, growing, packing, and sending corals across the lovely United States. I think that's it, guys. My girlfriend here is all fished out. Bye, she's done. Look at her poor knee. Um, but we will see you guys, I guess, on the next episode, which will be maybe in Niagara, where we have a coral show coming up next weekend there. It is nothing compared to a reef of Palooza. It is just a fraction, a fraction of the market and size. I think there's 12 vendors. That's not to say don't go. If you live in Canada, come by. We'd love to see you and meet you. We're gonna be there. But it's, um, it's a lot different than, than some of the ones down here. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe learned something about corals and cyphastrias and digis and all that fun stuff. If you like the content and you're not tired of the sound of my voice yet, you might want to hit that thumbs up button. Actually, hit the thumbs up button because it means a lot to us. And it helps the video to perform better because that super clever YouTube algorithm. I'm so happy they're using halides. And hit the subscribe button if you want to get notified when we do this stuff again. I want to do a giveaway actually next weekend we're gonna give away some free shit you guys know I love free shit and that's it I'm gonna let you go today and I'm gonna let you go with this with the cristata because I'm really happy to see this quite rare little torch coral here have a very nice day or afternoon or maybe morning I don't know where you're watching from maybe you're watching from Indonesia who knows wherever you're watching from I'm gonna say goodbye for now and never stop briefing